Motaro explained. A centaur to behold, the four-legged healer of the outworld, Motaro Origins. There are other video game titles that focus on tournament fighting, but many experts claim that Mortal Kombat is the finest of them all. That's not to suggest that other series don't have their own qualities, but Mortal Kombat has been at the forefront of the field for close to 30 years while maintaining a distinct level of excellence. Centaurians of Motaro's kind have fought the Shokan in the realm of outworld. Shao Kahn, ruler of the outworld, have started to punish the Shokan while favoring the Centaurians who have been helping him conquer and subjugate the Shokan people. Motaro was chosen to lead this select band of savage warriors when Khan created special extermination squads to kill the chosen heroes of Earthrealm during his invasion. The genesis story of Motaro is one of the more peculiar ones. The centaur-like monster has a long metallic tail and horns that resemble demons. In today's video, we shall discuss his origins and what makes him so deadly. Hello and welcome back back to another marvelous video, this is the V. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. <laughs> History of Motaro The narrative is pretty straightforward, although it involves a lot of different characters. Veterans who are savvy with the Mortal Kombat franchise should not find it confusing, though. Kano had been hurled from a building to the streets below after being defeated by Sonya Blade in the Mortal Kombat trilogy events. The gravely injured Kano was collected by Motaro, who then returned him to Shao Kahn's castle. Motaro used magic to bring him back to life, then locked him up so that Khan could later punish him for failing to vanquish Sonya. At this time, Shiva allegedly attacked Motaro and murdered him. But when he reappears in Mortal Kombat Armageddon, the Shokan has cursed the centaurs, transforming him and the rest of his species into bipedal minotaurs. Motaro's origins stem from Mortal Kombat 3, a game that was widely known for its storytelling and insane character customizations. Because of the characters, the narrative is immensely popular. In addition to Johnny Cage taking center stage and replacing Liu Kang as the game's protagonist, Shang Tsung became one of the gaming's most most adored antagonists. Even those who have never even held a controller are aware of the rivalry between Scorpion and Sub-Zero. That's not to say that other titles don't have their own well-known heroes, but often fans think of characters like Scorpion and Motaro when they imagine a tournament fighter. In the events of Mortal Kombat 3, Shao Kahn, who'd already lost to Liu Kang in the Outworld tournament, implements a 10,000-year-old plan. Because he is tired of losing tournament after tournament, he would have his former Empress Sindel, who tragically passed away at a young age, be revived by his shadow priests, commanded by Shang Tsung. She couldn't be resurrected in the outside world though. In the Earth Realm, she would be raised from the dead. This would give Shao Kahn the opportunity to cross the line of demarcation and claim his queen. Shao Kahn crosses the realms to take Sindel after she is reborn on Earth Realm. His action causes the Earth Realm to merge with the Outworld, instantaneously killing billions. Raiden safeguards their spirits, thus only a select handful are spared. In each of the several Mortal Kombat video games that have been produced over the years, the hostile and ominous Outworld is an essential part of the narrative. Those from this reality and their king are frequently viewed as the antagonists in many games under the well-known fighting game franchise. Outworld has a lot to offer for the more inquisitive Mortal Kombat fans, even for seasoned players that have numerous hours of lethal action under their belts, since more and more backstory is introduced with each game in the series. The growth and conquest of other realms have also led to the influx of several races into Outworld. Nonetheless, only a small number of races are indigenous to this realm, most notably the Outworlders and the Shokan. The former looks almost exactly like Earthrealm humans, as demonstrated by Li Mei, Bo Rai Cho, and a few others, but they all have far higher average physical strengths and magical skills. Despite having four arms and massive bodies that can easily crush many opponents, the Shokan are only loosely humanoid. Goro, Shiva, and Kentaro are the most prominent members of this formidable race. The Centurions are a race whose physical characteristics, agility, habits, and even aggression are based on the myth of the Centaur. The sole individual of the Centaur race that is known to the players is Motaro. They have been in the Emperor Shao Kahn's favor over his most dreaded adversaries, the Shokans, ever since they served him as one of his extermination squads. Perhaps greater than most Outworld species, they even claim to be the best. 
Motaro and his conquest forged a persistence of evil reign over all lands. Kano had been hurled from a building to the streets below after being defeated by Sonya Blade in the Mortal Kombat trilogy events. The gravely injured Kano was collected by Motaro, who then returned him to Shao Kahn's castle. Motaro used magic to bring him back to life, then locked him up so that Khan could later punish him for failing to vanquish Sonya. At this time, Shiva allegedly attacked Motaro and murdered him. He barely made it through as he makes a comeback in Mortal Kombat Armageddon. Since then, the Shokan has cursed the centaurs, converting him as well as the rest of his species into bipedal minotaurs. He and his species now had even further cause to loathe the Shokan. Motaro vowed to hold the Shokan answerable and forced them to pay severely. During the decisive battle, Motaro takes the field with the forces of darkness, and he dies at the conclusion of Armageddon like almost every other combatant. What makes Motaro so deadly in combat? On July 11, 1996, Mortal Kombat 3, the third and last game in the Mortal Kombat series, was published. Midway Games created it and Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment released it. The game was first made available in arcades and later versions for the PlayStation, Sega Saturn, and PC were published. Midway initially created a game which was first available in arcades in 1996. The game garnered favorable reviews, with reviewers appreciating some parts of the gameplay and aesthetics while mostly criticizing others, such as the degree of difficulty. MK3 had an overall grade of 76%, according to a review compiled by Game Rankings. At GameRankings.com, the arcade version has received an overall rating of 91%. On GameRankings.com, the game's most recent iteration, MK3 for the Dreamcast, scored an average of 86%. It was one of the first fighting games to take advantage of digitalized 3D visuals, and both players and critics hailed its immediate success. The actual game is an upgrade of the previous two Mortal combat titles, both games' characters are present. In addition, several characters were changed. Motaro appears as a sub-boss in the game, which is also his debut appearance. His moveset are unique and require speed and position to counter. A being if magic, he can teleport and use unique charge attacks to deal explosive damage. The Minotaur, also known as Minotaurus or Minosus Bull in Greek, was a fantastic Cretan creature with a human body and a bull's head. It was the progeny of Pasiphae, Minos's wife and a snow-white bull that the god Poseidon had given to Minos to be sacrificed. Greek mythology describes a creature with a human-like upper body and a horse-like bottom body and legs as a centaur or hippocentaur on occasion. Motaro, who makes his debut in Mortal Kombat 3, is a cross between both this mystical creature. Motaro is a centaurian, which means that his torso is human and his body is that of a horse. He has a headgear resembling a bull, just like the Minotaur. According to Mortal Kombat Armageddon, the Shokans, the centaur's racist swarm adversaries cursed them, mutating them into minotaurs. He also possesses two horns that resemble Capricorns and a long metallic tail that he can use as a limb and a conduit for energy. He is almost nine feet tall. The reputation of Centaurians spread far and wide as skilled hunters and possessors of supernatural abilities. As a member of the Centaurian race, Motaro had extraordinary strength. A single punch could knock human opponents multiple yards away. He could move across great distances with ease and perhaps launch devastating charge assaults thanks to his four-legged lower body. Motaro, a centaur, has extraordinary magical power and talents. Due to his four legs, he can run great distances and destroy anyone in his way. His metal tail has the ability to fire laser beams by focusing energy. He can take up his adversaries by the throat and punch them in the belly, sending them flying. His total immunity to projectile strikes is arguably Motaro's most infamous trait. The surface of Motaro's skin seems to be reflecting automatically deflecting collecting long-range assaults so that they are sent back at the enemy. Nightwolf uses this as a special move. He also has the ability to teleport as well, making it simpler for him to attack opponents from behind. He had lost two of his legs in Armageddon due to a strange Shokan curse, which also stripped him of his most potent talents and rendered his skin vulnerable. His signature moves include grab and punch, tail projectile beam, teleportation, bull charging, and hind leg kicks. Gory is the finest word to describe Motaro's fatality. For his signature fatality, Motaro triumphs by ripping off his opponent's head and holding it high. Mortal Kombat Trilogy N64 version fatality only. For Motaro. <laughs>
Mortaro and Mortal Kombat Annihilation In Mortal Kombat Annihilation, the second live-action movie to be released in the franchise, Mortaro plays a dominant role. He is played by none other than American Gladiator star Darren McBee. For three years, Darren McBee competed on the pro racquetball circuit. McBee performed as Malibu as an original gladiator on American Gladiators. He made an appearance on the show for one season before making a comeback for the live tour several years later. McBee is recognized for his blonde hair, tan complexion, and surfer attitude as Malibu. He has studied karate at the Billy Blanks World Karate Studio and has trained with Anthony DeLonges in hand-to-hand -hand fighting and swordsmanship. In his work as an actor, McBee is frequently given the opportunity to employ his fighting prowess to portray a villain in action movies. Needless to say, he sure does justice to his role as we see him playing the deadly crossbreed warrior in the Mortal Kombat world. Motaro was the role that made McBee immediately become renowned worldwide, and doing justice to Motaro was easy to him thanks to his martial arts training. Motaro participates in the invasion of Earthrealm as one of Shao Kahn's lieutenants in the live-action movie sequel titled Mortal Kombat Annihilation. The former star of American Gladiators plays him to perfection as the character appears to be a menacing presence on screen. In the movie, Motaro is a haughty warrior who competed with Shao Kahn's other lieutenants to kill the most people. He stands with Khan, Sindel, and Ermac against the cybernetically enhanced Jax Briggs in the movie's climatic confrontation. In the scene, Jax's shockwave seems to be of a little effect against Motaro as he stumps on the ground leaving his opponent enraged. Jax rolls on the ground to dodge his hooves as simultaneously we see Liu Kang engaged in combat. Motaro manages to get an edge in the fight as Jax charges at him and grapples him, ripping his cybernetic arm away from his body. Motaro seems stronger than ever with the tide of the battle turning towards the antagonists, taunting his opponent as he smacked his face away with his own arm. Motaro's deadly attributes begin to come to light. As Sonya begins to get smacked in the face, she cries Jax for help. Jax somehow manages to get a grip on the situation and shoves the center away. Motaro uses his tail to try and disbalance his opponent, but Jax is quick on his feet. I've got everything right here, he states. Deactivating his cybernetics, the hero goes the old-fashioned route. A few serious punches to the face later, Motaro is finally neutralized. He falls down to the side as we see Jax reunite with Sonya, who has also managed to defeat her adversary. Never smash the traitors! <laughs> Motaro's appearances in other media. Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realm included two appearances by Motaro and his clan. At the castle where Rain was holding Katana captive, he was there with his Centaurian warriors. Later, they appeared during the scheme to remove Shao Kahn. Motaro seems to be fighting the cunning Shang Tsung and the Shokans headed by Shiva after being forewarned by Raiden. Motaro, whether he had two or four legs, was still a deadly foe during the events of the Battle of Armageddon. He also died, much as the majority of the combatants. Raiden changed the course of history in Mortal Kombat 2011 video game by communicating with his former self. Raiden murdered Motaro during the Outworld invasion in this other reality. In Mortal Kombat Defenders of the Realms, Motaro and his fellow Centurions made an appearance. He and the Centurions are manning an old temple where Katana is being held hostage by Rain in the episode Skin Deep. Curtis Stryker and Liu Kang ascend the temple's walls before engaging Motaro and his troops on a balcony. The Centurions lose the battle because they are all sent tumbling down the balcony. When Katana, Shang Tsung, and the Shokan seek to overthrow Shao Kahn, Motaro and the Centurions defend his palace in the series' concluding episode Overthrown. Mortal Kombat legend Scorpion's Revenge has Motaro return on screen. Late in the film, among a swarm of creatures imprisoned in the dungeons under Shang Tsung's castle, a centurion who resembles Motaro makes an appearance. In an attempt to assassinate Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade, Kano lets the monsters out of their cages. But the two heroes team together to defeat Kano and save Jax Briggs by overcoming their supernatural foes. Marvelous Verdict For most veteran gamers, Motaro has been a steady and stable choice for his variety of movesets. Even though not the strongest character or the most alluring one in the franchise, Motaro has never failed to be a clear winner in the arena. Without your weapons, you're no match for Motaro, the center taunts Jax Briggs in his iconic scene in the Hollywood live-action history. Motaro is perhaps one of the most challenging bosses in the Mortal Kombat series. This is due to the fact that projectiles, which were efficient against his antecedents, 
weapons are ineffective against him. The majority of them bounce back at the player and frequently result in an unintended free hit, while some projectiles just pass through him, leaving the player incredibly exposed. In Mortal Kombat Trilogy, he is projectile vulnerable, but only when struck up close. Motaro is strong, grounded, and has magical abilities that surpass most characters. These facts are reinforced in his regenerative and life-bounding capabilities, and also his prowess in instant teleportation. For a centaur with the capacity to interact with souls and also rock-solid defensive capabilities, Motaro still remains a worthy adversary for anyone. If you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. Bro! <laughs>